Storing your spreadsheet data as Excel tables is going to save you a massive amount of time. I'm going to go through the six biggest reasons why you should do this in this video right now. Before we go on though, what on earth is an Excel table? Right, well, just to clarify, it's not a pivot table and it's not a data analysis table. It's simply a collection of data that Excel can refer to as a table and that will open up a whole load of additional features and benefits to you. And to turn something into a table, you go on the insert menu and you hit table. As long as you're inside a collection of data, it will make an assumption about where that data is. It will make an assumption about headers and you can tick or untick that. But Basically, you hit OK, this is now a table. And you'll see that we now have a table design menu, all of these whole new bunch of features opened, plus a new right-click menu associated with tables. First reason I think you should use tables is auto-expanding ranges or dynamic ranges. One of the great things about Excel tables is that whenever you put new data into the table, it's automatically picked up by any formulas or linked reports or charts or pivot tables or anything. So anything that is linked to that table will automatically pick it up. Um, and this is just an amazing time saver in Excel because actually a lot of time is wasted sort of changing formulas or changing ranges of cells. So I'll give you an example here. I've got a little dashboard here where you can click on various things. and You've got a, a, a little pivot table here and some slices and a chart. And you've also got a drop down list here where you can pick the top customers in a particular category. Now all of that is run from this table here. Now I've got a whole load of new data that I've put down here that you can see. And I'm going to add this to the table. So I'm just going to copy all of that and I'm going to paste it on the bottom of the table. The first thing you notice is it sort of picks up all of the same kind of formatting as the table. So it's pretty clear that it's in. But here's the proof. When you go back to this report, if I refresh this, you'll see, hopefully notice that small business, a brand new customer segment has come in, it's been added to the slicer and we can see the numbers here. And it's also been added to this drop down list here. And these numbers as well are all working completely fine. Not a single formula needed to be updated, nothing, just literally copy and paste straight in. So that is a brilliant feature of tables that'll save you an awful lot of time indeed. But of course, that's not it actually. There's more to this auto expanding stuff. If I go to this table, for example, I go to the end, if I hit the tab key, hopefully you can see that it's put another row on the bottom automatically, and this will now get picked up by any data ranges. I can also drag and drop the table range around to include other things. And if I type anything on the right hand side, so I'm going to type the word total, that will automatically expand that table to include this column as well. So that will be available now in other reports and anything linked to the table. Auto expanding, a brilliant feature of tables. Great reason why you want to be using tables as much as possible is auto data ranging. And this is what I mean. So if on the data menu you hit one of these sort buttons and you probably just see it as a bit of a flash, it will automatically highlight all of the data in the table and apply that function to it. Same with the filter, um, anything like sort, remove duplicates, it automatically highlight that. So if you want to do anything like that, you know, a forecast sheet picks the whole thing up. So any buttons that you hit, 
it will automatically expand to pick the data. And, and that includes as well shortcut keys like Control A, hit it once, it will automatically highlight the table data range, hit it twice, it will pick up the headers and any total rows too. Hit it a third time and you get the whole sheet outside of the table. So because this table is like an object, it's automatically going to recognize it in Excel and it just saves you like an extra click and really, really fast. You don't need to worry about highlighting ranges before you do anything. Reason that makes tables a must use feature of Excel is a really quick and simple one, but just really useful. And that is when you scroll down, I don't know if you can see, but the column headers, instead of being A, we've got A there, instead of being B, C, D, whatever, the column headers in the actual spreadsheet become your table headers. And clicking on them actually only highlights the table data. To demonstrate that if I go back up, you can see there, you know, when I click like that, I'll get the whole data. But as I move down, it says 2021, I click it, it's now just highlighted that. It's just a really nice touch, great, great little feature there that just means that it's easier to read your data and just saves you time, sort of freezing pains and things like that. A great little thing about tables is the formatting is automatic. So if you're in a table and you want to put some more data on the end of this table, I'm just going to pick some data here, uh, bring in all of this. And this is unformatted data here. It's got, you know, there's no commas in the numbers and the number of decimal places are somewhat random. When I go on the bottom of this table and paste it, you'll see what it's done is it's replicated the format of everything above. So it just saves that, just that little bit of time there. You know, saves kind of doing a paste special or, uh, or some kind of like format painter and bringing it down. I mean, as well as the fact that it's brought in the formulas on the other columns too. This little uh, data format keeps everything consistent. It's just a nice touch. It's just a little thing on top of everything else that tables have to offer in terms of time saving benefits. It means you can cut hours off your working week. What are slices? Well, slices are a way of having effectively your filtering system on the table built onto buttons on screen. So let's put some slices onto this table so that we can filter it quickly and simply. Before I do that though, what's the alternative? We've got these filter buttons here. So product category, I could hit there, hit on furniture, I'll filter to furniture, hopefully you're aware of that. But it's a bit clicky, so I'm just going to um, insert a few rows at the top here, just so we've got room for these slices that I'm going to put on. I'll click anywhere in the table so I get my table design menu, and on there we have insert slicer button. What am I going to do? Well, I want to put some buttons so that people can pick the customer sector the customer segment and the product category. Hit OK, and here they are. Not great looking, I must admit, right now, but that's no problem because we have slicer styles to pick from, and we can pick one that looks perhaps a bit more like our table and kind of match it up. All right, so now we've got them looking kind of OK. But they're a bit messy, aren't they? But they do work, you know, we can click on these buttons and that's all kind of great. And we can click on this clear filter buttons or have multiple buttons, filters at the same time. What I want to do though is quickly modify these so that they look a bit better. And when you click on them, you'll get a slicer menu appear. And on this, we can do things like change the number of columns. So if we change that one to two and that one to two, and then we can sort of drag them around. We can snap them to the grid by holding down Alt. Um, we'll do something like that, for example, product category. And this one we'll perhaps put over here. And maybe delete those two rows. 
you know, move that one over there a bit, say, customer segment, just using the arrow keys. And there's all sorts of options on these menus that we could pick from, including like the heights of the buttons, you know, heights of the actual slicer, we can have them over the top of each other, etc, etc. And then there's a whole bunch of settings. So really feature rich options just on their own that can make your data tables look really good, especially if you've just got a little table and it forms part of a report, you could have like the actual end user be clicking on buttons rather than messing about with filters. So yet another time saving tip and reason to use Excel tables in your spreadsheets. Moving columns around. Now, if you have an Excel table and your data's in a table, moving columns and rows is an absolute breeze and all your formulas will stay intact. Even when you do stuff that you might think looks pretty crazy and was bound to mess up formulas, it really doesn't. Now, let's say you want to move customer segment over here next to the category. You can click on the header there and click it again so that the whole column is highlighted. Now, when you get a crosshair, sort of hovering anywhere around the border, you could drag this and it will automatically, you know, if we drag it to there, it's just going to put it over there. Anything that was linked to that is going to stay linked to customer segment. It's not going to be picking up like picks up the column based off of the header, not from the reference. So all your formulas are fine. Yes, it's sort of messed up the column widths, which is a little bit annoying. But, you know, you could just highlight them and double click. Also, highlighting rows, you can move them around and it will just insert rows wherever you want. Now if we go down to the bottom, and I'm just going to put a total row on the bottom here, you might think that on a normal data set, if we swapped that down there to the total, these totals would not pick up that new row because we've moved them outside of the formula range. But of course, with um, the referencing in tables, it's picking up the total and total. So no problem there at all. So you're saving a whole load of time and effort of changing ranges and changing formulas because you could just move these columns around to your heart's content, insert rows, insert columns, everything's working, a whole load of Excel doing the hard work for you so you don't have to. Bonus reason why you should be using Excel tables. And actually, this is probably one of the biggest reasons you should use them of all. And that is that they are your gateway to Power Query. And Power Query is a whole nother world of productivity in Excel that's just going to save you an unbelievable amount of time. If tables haven't saved you enough time, the Power Query is just going to accelerate absolutely everything else you can do. So why do you need them for Power Query? Well, to get data into Power Query, although you can get it from all sorts of things like files and databases and, and ranges of cells, if you hit from table stroke range straight into a button, um, it's going to open straight up in the Power Query editor. It's going to pull in all that data there. You've got all your column headings ready set. You've got a good name. The name has been picked up and everything is, you know, straight in. And you've saved a whole lot of time in Power Query before you do anything else. It's an entire another playlist of videos about how you use Power Query. So it's not one for here but it is a bonus to let you know that you want to get used to using tables because it's going to open the door to the entire new world of productivity for you. If you want to get impressive results the fastest way in Excel, make sure you subscribe to this channel and have a look at these recommended videos too.